Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Tasho here, and we're back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today we're gonna go ahead and do a showcase for the homie Brave Hector. Now this guy just recently got his refine, and it's one of the nuttiest refines I think I've ever seen so far. Of course, leave it to the CYL units to end up getting these insane refines. So if we take a look at his refine, Maltet, it still has the minus one special trigger, which is very good. But they added the surveillance shield effect to it now, so he is neutralizing any effective against armor bonuses that the foes may have. That's very good because unlike a lot of the other armors that double as maybe a dragon or a beast type or something, Hector is only an armored unit. <laughs> so if he's neutralizing effective against armor, that means you really just can't hit him with any type of effective damage. I guess unless your name is Young Kata and you have effective against lances, but that's an entirely different beast, so let's completely ignore that. Also, his quick repost effect got buffed from a 50% to a 25% HP restriction. So pretty easy for him to just go ahead and do that quick repost effect. And on top of all this, he's neutralizing any penalties that he may have active on him. So what this means is if the foes are using stuff like Broadleaf Fan or Dominance, they're not going to be gaining any bonus damage at all against Hector. So that's really good. Of course, Broadleaf Fan and Dominance are two of the most powerful effects in the game. So him having protection from that is super good. And this is where things get even crazier because his special effect refine is literally just Thorn Lance and Aimer pretty much. Which is so dumb because that effect alone is already good enough to be a standalone weapon. <laughs> so I don't know why they decided to tack it on to a weapon that was already good. So basically just attack and defense minus 6 on the foes, and he negates them from doing a follow-up attack. Very powerful stuff, and of course, another cool thing about this Hector is that he's the only unit in the game that has a legitimately power crept version of Distant Counter. So we're not talking like Distant Ward or Distant Foil here. This guy legitimately has Distant Counter with stats on top of it, which is very good. And this is the build I'm going to be running today. So we have Special Fighter 3 as the B-slot skill, so that way he can pretty much activate Aether in every round of combat. And I'm going with Mirror Stance 2 as the Sacred Seal. Maybe it's not the best, like in some cases you may want to double up on quick reposts with this guy. Particularly if you're going to be playing him in Aether Raids, where a lot of people like to abuse impact effects in there. I think having quick reposts on this Hector would be a good call. Especially in the Elliewood matchup, because Elliewood's Blazing Durandal has that nasty impact effect on it. So if Hector's got Quick Repost as the seal and the refined Maltet, he's going to be able to crush Elliewood. So that's definitely very good. But I am going to be running him in Arena mode today, because I think that's another mode where you're going to see this Hector a lot. So let's just go ahead and hop right in, and we are going to start the showcase here. Alright, so our first opponent of the day. Oh man, <laughs> this guy has a sturdy impact legendary Celica. And he's got legendary Corin, Lif, and Thracer. Alright, this is going to be pretty tough because of course Celica and Thracer both have color advantage on Hector. And his res stat isn't really the best. So going to be interesting to see how I decide to deal with them. Also, Celica has Soul of Zofia, which has built-in null follow-up. So I can't even activate Maltet's quick repost effect and wary fighter effect against that Celica. So this is going to be something else. <laughs> I mean, I'm already fighting an uphill battle here. And I am also playing a water season team this time around. As you guys know in a previous video that I did, I said that the showcases were... Well, I, I guess you guys said that the showcases weren't really all that impressive because I always had bonus doubler on the unit. And the reason why I do that is because I'm pretty much fighting all plus 10s in these showcases. And my units have no merges, <laughs> for the most part. This Hector here, he's completely neutral and he's got not a single merge to speak of. So, I mean, I can't really show him off in a better situation than this, where not only does he have absolutely no bonus doubler effects, but he's got no merges, he's got no IVs, and the foes are all at plus 10. So if you guys ain't impressed by a showcase like this, <laughs> then I really don't know what to say because I'm just trying my best to make the units look as good as possible. 
All right, so we were able to get through that first fight somehow. I don't remember like how I figured it out, but I tend to pre-record these videos so I have better chance to think about the fights. Of course, if I were to do the commentary live, I wouldn't really be able to concentrate and figure out all the big brain plays. This time around, we're fighting a Brave Hector mirror match. So this guy has Bold Fighter on his Brave Hector. I don't really know that Bold Fighter is what he wants anymore. Of course, before he had the refine, that was probably the best way to go. But now he's like solely an enemy phase unit, and I think being able to ramp into Aether with Special Fighter is probably what you want to go for. He does have the nasty minus one special cooldown, so that makes Maltet already a very good choice for Special Fighter. Alright, I decided to hop off the defense tile for this match. We are in a mirror match there, so just to be fair, I got off of the defense tile. Okay, and we are able to finish this guy off with Aether. So pretty solid so far. I mean, even though we're using a water season team, we are doing pretty good. All right, this guy's got a duo bilith. He's running water sweep on his duo bilith instead of wind sweep. Obviously, if he had wind sweep, this would have been a problem because I wouldn't be able to counter attack her. But there are a lot of dragon type units in arena mode, so I can understand why he would want to go for a water sweep on her. Okay, we have to watch out for Julia because, of course, she's got impact, and she also has the Omni Lull skill, Light and Dark. So I'm not really going to be able to gain my maximum bonuses from getting danced by Legendary Azura against her. Alright, Tiki shouldn't be a problem. We already smacked her with Aether, so pretty easy there. Okay, Edelgard's pretty monstrous. She does have a lot of damage reduction from the second attack and onwards. Also, she has color advantage, so... I mean, we, we are in an uphill matchup here. I'm pretty much going to be glued to this defense tile to take her out. Okay, this is where showing off the units in this manner really starts to bite me. <laughs> because there's really nothing I can do to get all of my units out of the way and safely bait this Edelgard at the same time. So I'm going to have to do something a little unconventional. I'm going to go ahead and player phase this Edelgard with my Hector. And I am going to get special fighters, so I'll be able to ramp right into Aether. And then I can go ahead and dance on Hector and get the finish with Aether. And then I'm just going to get Amelia over there so we can get Armor March. Pretty much the only reason why I'm running Amelia at all on this team is because she's got Armor March. And the only reason why I'm running Krom is because he's really the only arena unit that you can use with reposition. And it's not going to hurt your score. So if you guys wanted an explanation for why I'm using the units that I am, <laughs> there you go. And we can just go ahead and player phase this Julia to death. So far, so good. Okay, 760, pretty badass score by this guy. Alright, pretty much two dragons, and then he's got Thrasir, and he's got Legendary Alm. Okay, so of course, Legendary Alm is one of these units that typically carries Null Follow-Up. So, Null Follow-Up is one of the best ways to counter Maltet's Refine. It's going to negate the Quick Repost and Weary Fighter effects that Hector gets. So, Legendary Alm can be tricky to beat. Let's see how I decide to take care of him, though. Alright, we're starting things off against this Halloween Mer. And luckily she didn't have Special Fighter, so I was able to one-round her with Aether and Special Fighter. Alright, so right here I am going to try to bait this Sorcerer. And we are taking massive damage from her, of course. She has color advantage and Hector doesn't really have the best of res stats. But we did manage to get Aether ready, so I will be able to finish her off on the player phase on the next round. And thankfully, this map makes it pretty hard for that Legendary Alm to come at me. So we just got to take our time with this fight. I don't really think Tiki is going to be that much of a problem. All we got to do really is figure out how to player phase this Thrasir, and we should be okay. Alright, so Thrasir went ahead and attacked the Crag there. Interesting. 
but I can go ahead and dance on Hector and go ahead and finish her off. Now, I guess, honestly, I don't really need to be using Amelia on this team to get Armor March because, <laughs> thankfully, Armor March finally became a seal. That's been so long awaited. I don't know why they took so long to make Armor March way more free-to-play accessible. I was expecting it to be either accessible from a Grand Hero Battle Unit or become a Sacred Seal at some point because it really hurts for free-to-play players to actually make full use of their armored units when they don't have Armor March. So finally, having that as a Sacred Seal is very good. All right, we're going to go ahead and bait this Tiki here. And she's got Special Fighter equipped, so I'm not going to be able to one-round her with Aether. All right, but we do have to player phase this Alm right now. Otherwise, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> All right, scratch what I just said. I managed to figure out a different way to do it. Okay, so here comes Alm, and now we can go ahead and player phase him and get the KO. So this is the reason why I would say running quick repost on Hector in arena mode isn't really ideal. Because if the foes have no follow-up, it's not going to matter that you have double quick repost on him. Like I said earlier, it's probably better to have double quick repost on him in Aether Raids, where impact is way more common. But in arena modes, you typically see null follow-up as the more common skill. So it's a moot point running double quick repost on him in here. All right, so we were easily able to get him on the defense tile for this turn. And we're going to have to bait both a Hector and also a legendary Alm here. All right, luckily Hector attacked us first, so we were able to build into Aether. Okay, I'm pretty much just going to glue Hector to that defense tile and... I did some shenanigans there to get maximum buffs on him with Azura's Dance. That's pretty much the reason why I have Attack Tactic on this Azura, and I'm running even Res Wave on Hector. It's also his default C-slot skill, and I didn't really have anything better in mind, so I decided to just roll with that, even though the Wave skills kind of suck, so, <laughs> I mean, there is that. Okay, we can't one-shot this Alm, which is a little bit demoralizing. I mean, he's only at 14 HP, but I have suffered a bunch of debuffs. And Hector, unfortunately, he doesn't negate his own debuffs unless it's the foes that initiate combat. So we're not really able to do anything about this Alm just yet. Okay, and I forgot that Racin was going to transform and go after my Amelia. Not the biggest deal. I mean, we did get a cheap shot on this Racin with Amelia. But I don't really think it's that debatable that Hector would be able to win that fight at full HP anyway, so... I mean, it is what it is. Okay, so this guy, he's got a Duo Alphonse. He's got Legendary Fallen Corin. He's got the Brave Edelgard, and he's got the Legendary Tiki. I would have liked to run Legendary Tiki with this Hector, actually. But my Earth Season team is my highest scoring team, so that's the team that I have set up to actually fish for the fights here. Because what I do is I hop into Arena Assault, I have to set up a high scoring team first, and whatever my highest scoring team is, right now it's the Earth Season team, that's what I have to go with. And then for the showcase, I'm free to run whatever team I want, and we're going to be able to fight the highest scoring opponents that we can. So if you guys were interested in what kind of tactics I'm using to get these fights, that's what I do. Alright, so Brave Edelgard, pretty much invincible if I'm not on a defense tile with this Hector. And maybe it would have been a different story if I had bonus doubler for Hector, but <laughs> you guys just hate it when I run bonus doubler in these showcases. So I'm trying to be as accommodating as I can with that. All right, so Robin, not a problem. We are on the defense tile, of course, so I don't really care about her. And all that's left now is Tiki, and we should be fine. I mean, we are going to stay on this defense tile, so shouldn't be too hard to get rid of her. All right, yep, and we also are going to get Aether as well, so... Or I guess not, she had Special Fighter equipped, but we had the clean KO there, so we were fine. All right, so this is going to be our final fight of the day. So we're up against full dragons and then a brave Edelgard. All right, this should be interesting. 
Of course, the Bunny Idun has effective against armors, but she's not going to be able to use that against Hector. So this is a very good aspect about this Hector in arena mode. There's a lot of units that run effective against armors, but Hector doesn't even care about that anymore, so it's not a big deal. Also, another big threat would be Legendary Krom. He's one of the toughest units to deal with when he has effective against armors. But Hector should be just fine against a Legendary Krom. I would have liked to fight him in this run, but it's not water season, unfortunately. So we weren't really able to run into any Legendary Kroms today. Alright, but Sothis and Brave Edelgard, both of them are green, so it's going to take us some time to get rid of them. And Tiki was able to snipe my Azura there. Luckily, she didn't have Bold Fighter or Azura would have died. And here comes Idun doing absolutely no damage at all. Alright, so I also want Hector to be the only one taking any hits here. So I'm going to have to maneuver my units out of the way so these armored units can't just jump everybody else. Alright, so Hector is pretty much surrounded at this point, but he's doing pretty good. We are ramping into specials with Special Fighter and just smacking people in the face with these Aethers. I mean, who does this Hector think he is? Ike? <laughs> like, how is he popping all these Aethers off? Alright, but now we're just down to Tiki and... Wow, I can't even finish her off on the player phase. Yeah, so that is one definite weakness to this Hector. Even against a Tiki with only 8 HP left, we can't player phase her for the win. So Hector, he may not be as good on the player phase as some of these other units, but on the enemy phase, this guy is a complete monster. So definitely an amazing unit and an amazing refine for Maltet. So that's going to wrap us up for the showcase today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing Hector in action. And as always, this is your boy Tacho signing out. So take care, everybody. Thanks so much for watching the video, and I will catch you guys again on the flip side.